Lady Danbury. Who can make these hats come back into fashion? Who can do it? Gen Z, figure it. Y'all are bringing shit back from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Could you perhaps bring things back from the 1770s? Because a bitch looks great in a tip hat. Bitch, am I not cute? Is she not a look? Look how high up it is. I didn't even try to make it. But it's a look. Guys, make it come back so I can look cute in this because I'm sorry, a hoe looks great with a, with a little slanted tricorn hat. Hey guys, it is me, Miata Ade Lebele. Get into it. If you're new to this channel, welcome, hello. Remember to like, subscribe, thumbs up, do whatever. Love me with the money that YouTube will give me if you watch this video. You may be asking yourselves right now, Miata, I noticed the title of this says episode two review. What happened to your episode one review? Okay, that means you probably don't get notifications from me, so let me just break it down for you. I, last night, got deeply inebriated. For you, for you, remember that this is for you. I recorded an outstanding episode one review, if I say so myself. I laughed, I cried, I twerked, I, truly went into this episode one because I fucking loved episode one of Queen Charlotte. I think it is an excellent episode of television, probably one of the best episodes they have done in any of the seasons of this Bridgerton extended universe. I finished deeply inebriated by this point because I had had four shots. Okay, yeah, I had too many shots. It's because I just kind of poured vodka in a cup. I didn't really measure it out or figure out how many shots it was, and that's on me. Also, after I drank those shots, added more alcohol because I didn't feel the effects of it like a dumbass. Here I am at the end of this review. Literally, I look like this. Guys, I was deep into it. But I was very excited because it was a great review. And I went to go check on how it went. You know, I'm doing my quality control. I'm gonna start editing at like 10 o'clock last night. And guess what? No sound. There was no sound. <laughs> there was no sound. There was no sound. I was deeply upset because like I said before, I was inebriated. <laughs> Called my husband into the room and was like, I don't think I made a lick of sense. Whatever I said to him, he was so kind. He listened to my entire 10 minute rant. I don't remember what I said. I was deep into the liquor. So I'm so upset. I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, almost about to cry because I was <laughs> Guys, I was so excited to talk about episode one with you because I love the episode. The moments where she and him are talking at the wall are so beautiful. The moments at the wedding are stunning. I mean, I am just so into the episode. I did find things that I didn't see the first time watching. It's something that uh, King George says a few times at the wall. He says, do you think me a troll? And she says, no. And he's like, do you think me a beast? And she says, no. And he's like, I assure you, I am neither. As we remember, those are the things he calls himself later on when he says that he can't go to her because he is a beast and he is a troll. These are things that he thinks about himself. Those are the words that come to mind when he thinks of himself. And it just, you catch all these little beautiful things on rewatches. And I have none of it now. Anyways, let's pour one out for the episode one review. Let's do a moment of silence as I take a shot. Do you think I was gonna stop drinking? I'm not gonna learn from this. I will remember you. Oh fuck. <clears throat> this vodka was $7.99. <laughs> this whole vodka. Okay, I don't want to spend too 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 much time on the outside of the review. Let's spend more time diving in. Um Again, if you haven't already liked or thumbs up or subscribed, do it. I just have nothing but fun on this channel. That's all I do. I try to make sense, but half the time I don't. And it doesn't matter because who cares? It's all fake. It's a fake ass show. And we're just having a really good time. Guys, if you're like me, have you guys been binging interviews of the cast? I've never done that for Bridgerton. I have never binged Bridgerton cast interviews. I've never been interested. And all of a sudden I am watching interviews of Corey and India and Freddie and Sam and Arsima and Adjua and, and Golda. And I am, 
gonna try not to get too, too drunk because guess what? I also have to review episode three right after this because I'm behind schedule now thanks to my episode one mishap. Oh! Okay, ready to jump in? Let's do it. Why isn't she wearing a bonnet? Where's the bonnet? He's absolutely perfect. So I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say that the only person who's ever really loved George is um, Queen Charlotte. And I just want you guys to see this. He's absolutely perfect. We all agree on that. And at the very end of the show, when she says, has your son, you know, when he just has his son and she says, has he exhibited any signs? And he says, he is the king. He's perfect. And she looks at her son and says, he is. She fucking loves her son. So let's just get that straight. This woman loves her son. She took massive amounts of abuse from his grandfather to make sure that her son was going to be installed as the king. Okay. She loves him. She thinks he is perfect, but she knows he exists in a world that's going to treat him terribly because of his mental illness. So I just, on this rewatch, it's lovely watching her try to deal very politically with the fact that she is a mother who fears for her son because he is dealing with an illness that no one understands. And at the same time, having to make sure that, you know, like she's still safe, that he's still safe, that she still has a spot with all of these Lords of Parliament. It's very interesting watching the performance. I really liked it. I, I feel like I'm one of the few people that's really talking <laughs> about it. And I know it's silly, um, but I really love seeing a mother love her son, but have to figure out ways to make sure that she's protecting him and herself from these men. There can be no questions. Do you understand? No. I've never hated a bitch like I hate Lord Butte. Fuck you, Lord Butte. You and that shiny ass face. Drop the skincare routine, but we still hate you, ho. I just want to call attention to the fact that India was probably 19 or 20 when she was filming this. I think she's 21 right now. A brilliant young actress who has so... I can't wait to see what else is happening in her career. I, I told y'all before, I'm a certified hater girl, you know, like I fully get jealous of actors because this is what I do. And I am just so impressed by her. And so just, she is phenomenal. She's so good. And she's so good from the jump. This epi this this series works because India is an amazing actress. And I, I can't wait to see her career because there are so many people acting, God bless, who I'm like, oh, this is who we're gonna promote? But when I see a woman like this, I can't fucking wait. And if you guys have watched India interviews, you can tell she's a Virgo, right? India's a Virgo. <laughs> she acts like a motherfucking Virgo. I'm a Leo. <laughs> India acts like a Virgo for real and she is so on top of her shit. She knows her shit. She doesn't really play around like she has some fun, but she's also very serious. I can't wait to see where her career goes because what an exciting young actress. And of course, Shondaland finding new hot talent that Shonda's so good at this. So props to the casting director, props to the production for promoting India because I can't wait. I just can't wait to see where this girl goes. I was waiting for a library scene because I was like, shit, this shit is boring as hell. Not the show. I'm just saying she's bored as hell. When is the library scene going to happen? Because as we know, I feel like every woman that's really into romance novels or Regency romance loves Beauty and the Beast. We love a, a learned, uh, beautiful, independent woman. So I knew a library scene was going to be coming up. And it did. <laughs> I love her. Yes, queen. Shout, shout. And she does. God, I fucking love Queen Charlotte. God, I love this fucking show. Special joys well worth waiting for. Now, why are these little biracial babies by themselves? Simon, Simon, reggae, where are you? You are falling down on fatherly duties. Come back to the show. And Phoebe's not here. So look at poor fucking Lady Bridgerton having to take care of these little babies by her lonesome. Shame. She is an actress. No. Break it off and find a suitable woman. They are already children. Shame on you. If 
I saw a few people, I mentioned this in my first review, which is gone now, but I mentioned a few people being kind of upset that the children mostly look Caucasian. Um, this did not bother me simply because if you are a biracial person and you have babies with a Caucasian person, your babies are three fourths white. Your babies are more likely, honestly, not more likely, but it does not surprise me when a baby that is three fourths white presents as white, um, or passes as white. So this was not, this didn't bother me too much. I, 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 th I think this, this baby over here looks like he may be mixed with a little something. She has a daughter that looks like she may be mixed with a little something something but the rest of the children present more white and so I this made sense to me with, with genetics you never know what you're gonna get right and so I you look at someone like Meghan Markle's children those babies are white you look at someone like Thondaway Newton's children them babies look black you don't know what genetics are ever gonna do so it didn't bother me that the children mostly looked um white simply because again they're three-fourths white I said this in my first review the fact that this season hinges on this storyline of Queen Charlotte has no grandbabies, it is stupid. It is very stupid. It's just not a very good framing device for the season. I think the weakest parts of the season are when we go back to the future and or the present. Sorry, when we come to the present because I feel like no one's storylines fully, I don't invest in any of them. This seems like a joke. Her, her wanting um, heirs seems like a joke. When I think at the very end, we're supposed to take it very seriously, but it's, it, it never comes across as serious. It never comes across as something that I'm fully invested in. So I, I do feel like it's one of the weaker parts of the season. Fun to watch, but like it doesn't do anything. And at most, it makes Charlotte look a terrible mother when I feel like Something my husband said in the very last episode as we were both weeping, copiously weeping, both of us, in the very last episode, he was like, why the fuck didn't we get more of this when Queen Charlotte is with King George? And why didn't we? Why didn't we have more moments with King George? Because her moments with her kids don't land, but the moment with her husband really fucking does. Y'all, how far away is Q? Now, I could simply look this shit up, but I will not. Q, it seems, is the show will take place during the day, and when you get to Q, it's night. Is this shit like six hours away? So now I understand why Reynolds was so mad when Brimsley asked him to come there and look at a motherfucking wall, because if it's taken me six hours to get to you by horse, I will kill you. Would you like to step indoors while we wait to find out? Warm up a bit, it is a cool night. I love them together. They're so cute, you guys. They're so cute. What happened to Reynolds? Justice for Reynolds. Where the fuck is Reynolds at the end of the show? Something I wanted to bring up, Shonda did say in an interview recently that she was not planning on doing a season two. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing where everyone's plot lines go because we want, if not a season two, I need a resolution for Brimsley and Reynolds. Um, I saw someone on Twitter say that they thought that this storyline, um, that they actually had scenes that they cut from older Brimsley and older Reynolds. Um, so if not, I, I need a resolution for them. I need some more resolution for, for Lady Danbury. Come on, we need more. <laughs> I knew from the second I saw these two together, I was like, they about to bone. I knew it. Again, they cast the right people for the show. Everyone's got chemistry with everyone. I love it. And I think. Y'all, how do you think it smells in there? <laughs> you know that meme? I know it smells crazy in there. Every time George has spent several days in this building, I'm always like, that man has been farting because at this time they were eating what? Meat and bread. That man's, and, and beer uh, and wine. This man's been farting up. So I would have just farted before she walked in. <laughs> Knowing me, uh, he's been probably in the same clothes for days. I know it smells crazy in here. I'm completely alone and you prefer the sky to me. Guys, what a fucking awful moment because she, he loves her already. <laughs> He's already in love with her. He's probably spent every fucking day here that he can, you know, like the days where he's, you know, mostly all together thinking of her and he can't be with her. And she's over here thinking that she is a toad because he doesn't want to actually be with her. Just, ah, oh, it's so fucking heartbreaking to watch. 
Don't you just want to scream, George, please, God, George. <laughs> George, please. <laughs> love her. She will love you back. Please. I talk about this in my overall review. I talk about it in my first review that has gone to the angels, but every scene with Lady Danbury and Lord Danbury, the more you think about it, the more gross it gets. One thing I did bring up, I'd like to just show you guys a quick picture of the actor and what he looks like as Lord Danbury. I said this in my overall review that I had a feeling they were darkening his makeup and they were. I had a feeling that they were darkening his lips and they were. Um, I said this before that something about his performance and hair and makeup gave me the ick and I feel, and because I felt like it was menstrually and I still feel that way. Something about this doesn't work and one of my commenters, a few of my commenters, and I've seen this also on Twitter, people have mentioned that this feels like marital rape. Um, I had mentioned marital rape in my first overall review. I took it out because after talking to some people, people didn't think it was rape, but this is a woman whose husband grabs her, throws her on the bed and starts having sex with her. We are supposed to take this as a joke, but this is a woman that's not consenting to sex. Her, her husband simply doesn't care. And this is at a time where women didn't really, it didn't matter whether they consented to sex or not, they had sex with their husbands. So I know this is supposed to be like a fun, fun joke joke, but this is a woman who most likely was minding her business. Her husband grabs her arm, throws her into the bedroom, pulls down her skirts or pulls up her skirts and starts having sex with her. That is not consensual. And it kind of is gross that it's played for jokes. Um, so that kind of sucks. Um, I'm not going to bring it up every time it happens. I'm probably not going to. I, I really don't want to talk about it all that much because I, I'm just, I, I hate everything about this relationship. Um, but it kind of sucks that their relationship is played for jokes um, when what's happening to her happens to many women and it's not really a joke. And that kind of sucks. Embroidering a pillow. She was embroidering a pillow. And he came, grabbed her, fucked her, raped her. So anyways, that's it. I'm not going to mention it anymore. Um, but yeah, it, her, her, the whole storyline with Lady Danbury fucking blows. First off, beautiful moment that he sends her the dog, as we see in episode four, that he rescues that little dog from that demented ass motherfucking doctor. And then as we're just about to see when she calls it, what, a, a demented bunny? Whenever she calls it, when she when he learns what she calls it, he laughs in delight. Charlotte delights him. And at this point, has he started stalking her yet? <laughs> has he started coming to the grounds to just watch her exist? I mean, I love episode four because I love seeing all the things that were happening on his side. So this is just a really beautiful moment in, in, in retrospect, seeing her... <laughs> hate this dog and him knowing she hates the dog but him just being delighted by her nonetheless with one trust lady danbury first off what this white man know about lady danbury okay she's not part of the ton okay he works in the castle what he know about her secondly what really disappointed me was first off her relationship with Lady Danbury. We think it's about to become like this bestie situation, right? Like they got a secret handshake. They know what they're about. But we see her with Lady Danbury. What I don't know, like five times all season. I, I just I wanted more from their relationship, more from their friendship. Furthermore, I really thought this was a missed opportunity to not have more black ladies in waiting. Something I've complained about with Shonda shows before is she will have leads of color, but surround her leads of color with primarily white cast and I just feel like we have this the Smythe Smiths which if you guys have read the books I love hearing about the Smythe Smiths because they show up in the books every single book um they have little parties and their daughters are terrible singers and they force them to sing and everyone hates their parties but goes anyways we have all of these members of the ton who are now uh, people of color part of the ton and I would love to have seen more of those women be involved with the season they didn't do it I don't know why um so um I, I do think it was a missed opportunity on behalf of, of, of the show to not have shown us more ladies in waiting or just given us more Lady Danbury, um, Queen Charlotte interactions. Is she not one of the prettiest people you've ever seen before in your life? I get angry looking at Arsema's face because bitch who gave you the right? Who gave you the right? 
who gave you the right, okay? She's like half Nigerian. She's half East African, maybe like Ethiopian or something. She just immaculate. She's an immaculate looking woman. And I just, some days I'm like, God, why haven't I not, you know, become a famous actor? And then I look at how beautiful people like Arsena is. And I'm like, okay, fine, fuck. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Don't, if you're one of my friends, don't get mad at me for trashing on myself, okay? I'm working on it with a therapist. You did have a wedding night? <laughs> I love India so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so funny. Holes. I cannot fully show what they show on the paper with the drawing paper and charcoal. <laughs> I laughed. I adored this moment so much. I, if you, if you've ever, you and your bestie have ever just talked about SEX and, and positions, I loved this. I thought it was such a funny, but sweet, but wonderful moment. She drew so many positions. I mean, baby, there was like at least 10 pieces of paper, like, she went to town on that shit. She is the friend we all deserve to have. Let's give it up for Lady Danbury. Sorry, I did drink all my drink, but let's give an empty cup up to Lady Danbury, a real friend, the kind of person you need in your life. This is a surprise. When they all three get together, this feels so forced. It really feels forced watching all three women be like, we're just friends. The only women in London that Queen Charlotte will talk to. It's, they've done this in Bridgerton before. I'm not going to harp on it too much, but it, it never feels organic. Lady Danbury. Who can make these hats come back into fashion? Who can do it? Gen Z, figure it the fuck out. Because y'all are bringing shit back from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Could you perhaps bring things back from the 1770s? Because a bitch looks great in a tip tat. Bitch, am I not cute? Is she not a look? Look how high up it is. I didn't even try to make it. But it's a look. Bitch, sorry, there's so much dust on it because it's just been sitting on a shelf. Guys, make it come back so I can look cute in this because I'm sorry, a hoe looks great with a, with a little slanted tricorn hat. Because if you do not, the House of Lords will be at your door. Here's the thing. At this moment, you were like, Lady Danbury is a bad bitch, right? She's got this shit under control. She has the queen by the short hairs. Like she knows what she's doing. And then the rest of the season, we watch her flounder. Bitch, the queen wants to be your friend. Just go to Queen Charlotte. Do not go to this woman. Go to Queen Charlotte. Like, what are we doing here, Ra? Charlotte, Charlotte, if you'll just give me a chance. Charlotte, stop walking this instant. Again, when you see what he's been going through in episode four and him just being like, okay, it's time. I'm going to go there and I I'm going to, I'm going to talk to her. And she walks in and she's upset at him and just, <sighs> guys, I love them. I, I wish I could have more commentary that wasn't simply, I think these two work. I think the writing works for them. I, I love the back and forth with them. I love how much she was trying to improve improve to himself for her he thought he needed to be better for her i just i love their relationship i love knowing what was going on with him and i again i just think they're just such well written they're such a well written couple y'all they had to go all the way back to q that's what three to six hours. Again, I'm not looking this shit up. If you're British, go ahead and post in the comments how long that drive is. If someone wants to just do a quick Google, a quick Google Maps, let me know. A Waze, okay? And, and iMaps. I'm sorry, I have an Android. I don't know what you guys use for maps. Well, George, it is beautiful. It is. Guys, is there anything better in a rom-com than a woman looking into the distance saying, God, that's beautiful. And a man looking directly at her saying, it is. Legs wide open, let's go, okay, honey? I've had alcohol. Yet. Yet. I love when India smiles. <laughs> she has the cutest smile. 
still. She doesn't smile much in this series, but when she does, it's just like the it's the cutest it's the cutest little thing. I love when they're smiling together. God, I love them. Mary. Did I get a snack just to watch the scene? I did. Guys. 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 I just want to talk very quickly about Corey's teeth. I love them. Um, something that happens a lot in American media is that all of our actors have to look like models, which is such fucking bullshit. Um, I feel like British actors get to look like real people, and it's why I'm so deeply jealous of them. Um, if you guys watched Smallville, which is one of my favorite TV shows when I was a kid, <laughs> all of the main actors had like a snaggle tooth. Like they'd have like a incisor that was just poking out a little bit, or their front teeth may be a little inverted or a little poked out. Something about Teeth looking like regular teeth is so hot. I love his mouth. I love this man's mouth. And it's because his mouth looks like just a, a, a real ass mouth. And I feel like we have so much veneered teeth in television these days. And it's such a shame because I just feel like there should be beautiful variations in teeth. <laughs> Teeth are sexy. There's something about a, a smile that's deeply sexy and a smile that if you guys have like a snaggle tooth or your teeth aren't quite perfect, I just want you to know I love that. I love that about mouth. I love mouths that are not all just completely perfect. And Corey's mouth in particular, I am so drawn to all season. <sighs> they just make me swoon. Both of them make me swoon. I'm very good with buttons. Help! 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 <laughs> if a man told you that he was very good with buttons, baby, I, I don't even think I would have the patience to let him undo them. I think I simply would rip them. <laughs> I, would, I would discover the strength of the Hulk. I would rip the room to pieces. I don't know if you guys noticed because I'm watching this scene so closely right now. Right before they fully kiss, it's silent. There's no music. It is simply letting us hear them breathe. Listen to the fire crackling. It is what they would be hearing in this moment. Just each other breathing and the fire crackling and their hearts pounding. <sighs> God, would we all have been so blessed to lose our virginity this way? Because <laughs> that's not how it happened for me. Good. And he bites his lip. Fuck you, Corey. Fuck you, Corey. We're supposed to just exist. We're supposed to just exist. I'm supposed to just exist. I'm supposed to just exist in a world where men aren't biting their lips at me every day. Fuck you, Corey. He loves this woman. <laughs> Y'all, I'm in a deeply committed, deeply loving, like amazing relationship. My husband can do no wrong. But when I watch a show like this, I'm like, why am I alone? God, why hast thou forsaken me? <laughs> I am so married. I've been married for almost six years. I've been in a relationship for almost 11. And when I watch shit that Shonda writes, she makes me feel single. Fuck you, Shonda. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fuck you too. I never thought that I would. Look at this man's ashy ass makeup. Now I have said some good things about hair and makeup for this show. I actually said it in episode one and that shit's in the garbage, but I have said good things about them. But what they did to this man, they will pay. All right. They will pay. Not an undertone to be found. Not an undertone. He looks like Marley's ghost. Man looks like he died five years ago. Why is he? Look at this. Beautiful queen. Undertones for days. This man Looks like he's not seen this side of the earth. He's been in, in a casket. He is casket ready and has been so for 10 years. Why the fuck didn't they shut the door? If I know I'm about to have a conversation with my son about whether or not he has had sex with his wife, let me tell you where I'm not going to have the conversation. In the main hallway with the door open. I'm just saying everybody's at fault for this situation.
this is towards the end of this episode and god the next two episodes are such a rough fucking time for george i mean there's a lot of of sex in the next episode but god we know what he is going through and fuck okay guys we finished episode two of queen charlotte how was it fucking great I have no notes. Um, I mean, obviously I have notes. You guys saw whatever I complained about in the episode. I think the scene where he and his mom are arguing with the door open is quite stupid. I really wish the relationship between Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury had actually really been solidified. Everything to do with Lord Danbury, I absolutely hate. But those are very small compared to the excellent writing in this series, the relationship building in this series between Queen Charlotte and George. I love Brimsley. I love Reynolds. I love Lady Danbury. I wish, I just wish her storyline was a lot better. But um, it's just great. It's great. I, I wish I had more to say. Half of my review, I may cut some of it out, but half of my review is just saying, I love them. I love them. I love it. I love them. I love everything. I love it. I love it. I love it. I fucking love it. I, I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. If I haven't already said, I just, I have friends that are texting me that they love this series more than Bridgerton. Uh, Y'all are telling me that. I see it on Twitter consistently. We are so happy with this series. It's just hard to find a lot to say that I haven't already said in my overall review, right? So anyways, guys, I'm going to see you guys very soon. Literally, I'm going to take another shot and start watching episode three. So I'm going to see you guys literally in one second for me for my episode three review. Okay, see you soon, guys. Bye.